Hey everyone, um, time for another vlog. Uh, today I'm going to talk about work-life balance. Um, it's something that I struggle with and I assume everybody struggles a little bit with it. So does work-life balance actually exist? Some weeks I really start to wonder and I know I struggle with it. So as I said, I'm sure you do too. But what exactly is work-life balance? For me, it would be setting up a time for work and a time for life. And what do I consider to be life? Family, friends, hobbies, uh, entertainment, any of those kind of obligations that you have outside of your actual job. Um, obviously, most of us cannot be depend on our office to change for us. So we have to be a little bit flexible and work around our full-time job. Um, we do what we can with what we have to work from. It doesn't matter if you work part-time or full-time, you're exempt or non-exempt. We all feel that pressure to do a great job and be there when we're needed. Most of us work long hours on top of a long commute. And that's on top of taking care of our house, our dogs, our pets, our kids, and on and on and on and on. We have so much that we need to take care of. None of us are living those perfect lives that social media puts the pressure on us to have. No one. Not a single person. You aren't failing if you didn't finish that book or bake those snacks for your kids from scratch. And that's okay. It's okay. Let that sink in for a second. So how do we achieve that elusive work-life balance? First, and this applies to me, may not apply to you, but we have to get rid of the trying to be perfect. I have been working very hard on curbing my perfectionism and I'm not perfect at it. I still fall into those old patterns, but I've started learning that being done with something is better than it being perfect. If I wait for something to be perfect, it may never be put out into the world. Um, sometimes I wouldn't even start. How silly is that? Like not starting something because it's not going to be perfect. That is dumb. Um, so I really try to live by it's better to get something done than nothing. It's better to put it out there than to wait. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, no one else notices. They aren't picking apart everything like I would do to my own work. I don't pick about, apart other people's work and I know they're not sitting there going, oh, well, she did this and she did that. That's in my head. That's what I do. Not everybody does that. Um, most of the time, they're not even going to notice your stuff. Let's be honest. The algorithms on Facebook and Instagram and your blog or wherever you're posting, not everybody's going to see everything. So why are we spending all this time making it perfect? when it's better just to be done. Okay, moving on from that, um, the next big thing I think is scheduling. And I'm not talking about sitting down and planning every single moment of your day, but it's good to have some time to dedicate to the things that you know have to get done and things that you want to get done. So start by identifying those big important things in life like work, family, exercise, whatever means the most to you or is the most important. And don't just focus on the work task. Look at what you need to do for your family, for yourself. Get those on your calendar. Make a list. Make a mental list. You don't have to actually write everything down. I prefer to have a calendar and a to-do list because that's what works for me. I need to have stuff written down. If I don't write it down, I don't remember it. I have a really bad memory 
And when I get stressed or have a lot going on, I tend to forget things. So I like to write them down, but not everybody does. Um, and then you can fill in the little gaps as you go with everything else that you have to do or want to do. Um, for more on this information, look up Stephen Covey. It's the big rock theory. So you have the big boulders that you put in first, and then you put in the little rocks, and then you fill the rest with the sand. All right. Um, so what are we scheduling? Work. Obviously, that's a big one for everybody. Um, I work a full-time job, and I'm trying to get a photography business going on the side. Um, so I make sure I keep my full-time job completely separate from my personal life. I only work my scheduled hours. I don't answer emails or texts or anything like that outside of my standard scheduled work hours. Of course, there's a few exceptions in there, here and there. Um, there's been times where I've been on vacation and gotten a text like, oh my God, I don't know how to do this. So I take five minutes and answer it, but I'm not logging into my email and going, oh my gosh, I have to answer this. Oh my gosh, I have to do that. I stay off of that. And, or for example, when I broke my leg, <laughs> I logged in to, you know, contact work and let them know what was going on and kind of clear out my inbox because I knew I wasn't going to be in there right away. And I had a lot of time on my hand. I had a broken leg. I was just sitting around. Um, so yeah, I try to limit doing my full-time job anytime I'm not on the clock. And that's for my sanity. Because I also have this part-time business that I'm trying to make successful. I have friends. I have my dogs. I have, you know, my boyfriend. I've got hobbies that I like to do. There's so much to do and not always enough time. Um, so full-time job, do it on the clock. That's it. Set boundaries. My photography is delegated to weekends and days off and sometimes nights, but I only do that when my boyfriend isn't home. So that means I get every other weekend to really get stuff done every other Saturday and maybe one or two nights a week. So I make sure I write in my planner what tasks I want to get done for the week and I set my hours based on when I'm going to be home alone or not have any other obligations so that I can still have time for other activities and other people. So if you have kids, you'll probably want them to be one of your big rocks. Um, they have their own activities, their own schedule, and you probably don't want to miss out on things that they do. Uh, I can't really speak to this. I don't have my own kids, but let's say your daughter has soccer every Wednesday and Saturday. That's a big rock. You may want to be at her practice. You may want to be at her games. Maybe you want to coach. I'm not really sure. You have to figure that out for yourself and make your rocks fit for that. Um, if you have a partner, you need to discuss who's responsible for what and try to split it in an even way, whatever that means for you. So if that's you take your kid to all of their dentist and doctor's appointments and your partner does all of the sports activities or school, whatever's fair in your household. Which brings me to household chores, which is probably another fairly big rock. Maybe we probably don't want to be living in filth. Um, so kind of figure out a schedule for those big tasks like laundry. I do my laundry every Saturday. And then I squeeze in smaller things throughout the week. Um, I make sure I wash and dry all my clothes on Saturday. And then maybe a weeknight when I'm watching TV, I'll fold it and put it away. So it's not all done at once. Um, that works for me because I don't like to spend all day Saturday cleaning. That drives me absolutely nuts. Uh, try to split your duties fairly amongst the household members. Maybe your kids are old enough that they can start doing things like putting away the dishes or taking out the garbage. If you work from home, maybe you can squeeze in a load of laundry during the week or, you know, run the dishwasher. Um, I don't know. It's something that I've been working on because, as I said, I hate wasting an entire day off doing chores. So I do a little on Saturday, a little on Sunday, and try to keep things tidy throughout the week. I am also a big believer in self-care. 
uh, being healthy and fitting in fitness. I think working out and getting in your sleep makes you happier. I believe other people and hobbies are just as crucial in finding that balance to being happier. So start by identifying what and who are essential to you. What do you want to fit in around work and chores? Um, maybe you have some friends, so how do you want to fit them in? Can you meet them for a quick coffee before work or on a Saturday rather than going out for dinner on a Friday night when you're exhausted and tired and you just want to go home at the end of the day? Or maybe you can meet at the dog park or take your dogs for a walk. Or maybe you have kids the same age and they can play together while you guys hang out. Um, do you like to read? I do. And I fit in my reading time on my commute. I take the bus to and from work and that's when I read. Uh, I also sometimes read on my lunch break if I haven't brought any photography work to do with me. Um, so that usually allows me to fit in about a book a week. Just, you know, the 20 or so minutes in the morning and the 20 or so minutes at night with maybe once or twice during the week. Um, I also love learning, so I enjoy listening to a lot of podcasts. Um, I get to listen to podcasts while I'm at work, so I do that. And while I'm running, so that I can enjoy something while I'm out running because I don't enjoy listening to myself breathe. Uh, maybe you prefer music. Maybe you can listen to music at work on your commute. Maybe your kids enjoy music or podcasts and there's one that you can share together and listen to every night at bedtime. Which brings me to sleep. Get your sleep! As someone who gets sleep but has chronic sleep chronic fatigue, I can't stress enough how important sleep is. If I don't get enough hours or I have a few lousy nights of sleep, I cannot function, which means I can't get anything fun in. I struggle to get through my work days. When I get home, I skip my workouts because I'm just so exhausted. So if I have a few nights where I'm only getting six hours of sleep, it takes me days to recover. And even if you don't have like a chronic fatigue syndrome or something else that makes you struggle with sleep, seriously, get in your sleep. It is important. It makes you happier. It makes you healthier. It helps when losing weight if you need to lose weight or want to lose weight. It just, it helps on so many levels. So make sure that part of your work-life balance is sleep. And I'm going to hold you to that one. Um, health and fitness are major ones, at least I think, but it's important to find something that you love and will actually do. If you don't like running, don't take up running. If you don't like lifting weights, don't take up lifting weights because the thing is, is you're not going to stick to those things. Find something you love and will do and stick with it. And myself, I try to run three to four days a week, uh, lift three days a week. Some weeks are better than others. I also use my 15 minute breaks at work to get in some brisk walks. I think those are important. Um, they have a double benefit. I get in a little mini workout and I get refreshed for work. So if I'm working on something and it's like a tedious, boring task, or it's something that I'm just not excited about or struggling with or whatever, I can take a 15 minute break, go do a quick walk, and I come back and my head's clear and I can think better. I can jump in and finish the task much faster than if I just sat there and waited and stared at it and bleh, you know, did all that kind of stuff. Um, so Think about that. Try and fit in little exercise breaks throughout the day. Just a quick walk. Um, sometimes at home, even when it's too hot out, I'll just walk around my house for a few minutes just to kind of get a little bit of a walk break in and clear my mind. Uh, speaking of clearing my mind, when it's nice outside, um, like it's starting to be in the fall here in Arizona, I really like to get outside and go for a hike. Um, there's nothing like being out in that fresh air 
and having that open space to let go of the stress. So that's a nice good way to get a balance is to go outside and enjoy nature, whether that's hiking, kayaking, um, I don't know, playing a sport, how, whatever. Sitting outside and sipping your coffee can even be a nice stress reliever. Um, so that is all of my advice on work-life balance. I'm sure there's a lot more that I skipped. Um, start small. You don't have to do all of these at once. Pick one, work on it for a bit until it comes second nature, and then implement something else. So it may seem a lot easier to do the 15 minute walk break than letting go of being perfect. So start there. Start with one 15 minute walk break a day. Do it for a week or two. Add in a second break. Do that for a couple more weeks. Start working on something else. Um, make it part of your life and then add in something else. In the meantime, embrace that imbalance and the imperfection. This is where you are. Accept it. Start changing the things you know you can change and let go of everything else. Let go of that guilt. Let go of the shame. Stop trying to keep up with your neighbor, your coworker, whoever, and just focus on you because you are the most important person in your life, whether you want to think that or not. Um, set some boundaries at work, at home, in your head. If you know you're a perfectionist, allow yourself one or two chances to redo something. And then once you've hit that point, let it go. So as you can see, not all of those boundaries are going to be visible or spoken out loud. Just know what you can do and know what you can fit in. Um, and kind of a last thought I had was we talked about scheduling. And usually when you think of scheduling, you think of, you know, the day-to-day -day, hourly minute type scheduling. Like I have a meeting at 930 or I'm going to exercise from 6 to 7. Try thinking in larger increments for a while. What can I get done this week, this month, this season? Um, maybe you have a novel that you've been putting off and putting off because you just don't have time. Make that your next season. Take the next three or four months and focus on fitting in novel writing time. What are the 12 things you most want to accomplish in 2020? Think about that. Just 12 things. Can you make it so each month you cross off just one? Just one of those 12 things. Because then, come December 31st, 2020, you'll have accomplished all 12 of them. Or maybe you have bigger projects. Pick four. Four big projects. And do them each quarter. Or each season. However you want to think about it. But start to think outside the box for your scheduling and how you can fit everything in. Remember, you are not alone. We all struggle with finding the balance of fitting it all in. I struggle with it. I struggle almost every day with fitting everything in. I feel burnout. And every couple of months, I want to quit photography. I start thinking about how much effort I'm putting in and how little the needle seems to be moving. I see others appear to be prospering or becoming overnight sensations. And I wonder, is all the work I'm doing worth it? Are the hours I sit at my desk or my work table, planning social media, planning blogs, going out and taking pictures, editing photos, is that really getting me anywhere? Would my time better be served doing something else? Right now I read about 52 books a year. If I wasn't doing photography, I could read more than 52 books. I could paint, I could draw, I could cook, I could bake. Um, I don't bake nearly as much as I would like to. I sit and I think about these things. And sometimes I even say them out loud to other people. But I'm not ready to give up yet. 
So I sit down and I adjust my work-life balance. I try to make sure I'm getting in my reading. Um, I might watch a movie that I've been wanting to see or binge watch The Office. Um, you know, just little things that I can do that make me feel just a little bit happier and balance out that uh, working versus creative versus life business balance, all that stuff. So no, you're not alone. And I don't always put this out into the world when I'm struggling, but I do. My house isn't always clean. A run gets missed. But overall, I'm happy. And you know what? That's what it's all about. Being happier and finding what brings you joy. So how do you balance life? What are your biggest struggles in fitting it all in? And what tips do you have for others to find work-life balance?